Hola, Hola bon, bon dia. dia. We've had a busy week, but it feels like we didn't really do much because everything is still in progress. Mm-hmm. Certainly is. Christina was removing lime wash and varnish this week, so I had uh, so I was busy being her videographer, uh, gardener, and personal chef. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. You didn't want me hangry. <laughs> can paint the original interior walls with latex paint is to remove the lime wash and while the lime wash is already chipping off in some places it's surprisingly hard to remove from the wall so I made a huge mess and I can only do a small section at a time because it hurts my shoulder so the only way to get rid of the lime wash is to wet it really well with a brush. So I have hot soapy water and I need to go up and get the bigger brush, but I'm just using this one for now. So I need to wet the wall down really well. Scrape it off. what it looks like so far. So I'm going to be doing this for a while. I'm not sure how much of the lime wash I need to remove. I mean this section here is pretty much down to the cement but you can see some areas still have some lime wash so I'm just going to keep scrubbing it down and scraping and see what happens. We visited our friend Maria this week and she showed us some furniture that she had stripped using um, baking soda and hot water. So I decided to give that method a try because I don't really like using the, the chemical paint stripper. And I got a half decent start on removing some varnish. So I mixed a half cup of baking soda with four cups of boiling water and I'm just scrubbing it on. It didn't really do much on this piece because this one has a varnish although now that I've let it sit it looks like it might have done something possibly. Yeah, now that it's sat 
it looks like it's doing something. So let me get some more in here. The main part that I need it for is the detail where it's difficult to get in with sandpaper and without ruining the design. It looks like it's working. Mm -hmm. It's just taking longer on the one with, with varnish. Now, what I read online did say that you have to leave it on for 15 minutes. I'm assuming theirs was more like a paste, though, because how do you leave it when it's just liquid? I don't know. So I'm just trying to work it into both of these pieces. I probably should have taken the hardware off of this one first, but, you know, I was impatient to try it. So it made a slight difference. But for the amount of work, it's not really enough to make it worth it. So I scrubbed at it for quite a while, and I left the baking soda and water on for about half an hour. And yeah, I think I'm going to have to try the paint stripper because I would have to do at least two, probably three applications of this in order to get it to where I need it to be. So you can see here, if you zoom in closer, it has started to take away the varnish, but there's still quite a bit on here. And even though I was scrubbing everything fairly evenly, it hasn't stripped off the varnish evenly. And you'll notice the same here. So the one with the handle still on it is from the nightstand that I haven't started working on yet. And this one, you can see where I very lightly sanded the surface in the bottom portion of the detail and the face here it did do a little bit more where i'd already sanded it but that defeats the purpose i want something that's going to remove the varnish and the wood stain from the recessed portion where the detail is without sanding so time to start stripping Ooh, stripping. <laughs> Can I film that? Sure. Are you ready to strip? We're doing a little strip tease here. Yes. Sweet. Yep. And if I have extra, I can go on the next one. It says it's supposed to work in 15 minutes. Everything today seems to be 15 minutes. Everything today seems to be 15 minutes? Well, supposedly. Mm. The other one didn't work, but. I wish. Really? Or you wish. Okay, and I'm going to cover it with saran wrap. Maybe. I hate saran wrap. <laughs> So 
Hopefully this is going to work better. You can feel the heat actually through the plastic a little bit. You're dyeing your hair. <laughs> Almost. All right. I'll see you in 15 minutes. 15 minutes later. And this is why I don't like using paint stripper because. You know, since they got rid of the really powerful stuff, it just gets all gooey. So I remember using paint stripper when I was younger, when my grandfather was teaching me how to refinish furniture. And it worked way better than this stuff. But, you know, I'm sure it was even more chemically delicious than this one, so. It's chemically delicious. Hmm. Good luck with that. Yeah. Maybe you'll have to do the baking soda after the stripper. That's what I'm thinking. The stripper might just remove the varnish or enough of it that I can then do the baking soda after mm -hmm. to get the stain off and any residue from the varnish. Okay. So, but it is working. You can see it working. Is it tingling? That means it's working. If I touch it, yes. Hello. Hello. It's very messy. I'm sorry. It's okay. The good news is this stuff doesn't eat through the dish gloves. The bad news is it doesn't eat through the dish gloves, which means <laughs> it's not friggin' working. Because <laughs> the stuff that I had when I was in college would have eaten through these in like, I don't know, five, ten minutes. It would have felt like my hands were on fire. Not that that's a good thing, but it actually took the paint and varnish and stain off you know easily sure. and painlessly well as long as you wear the chemical gloves it's gonna take you like three months to do the whole cabinet um i don't know the good news is we're painting this. I'm not trying to bring it down to the wood to stain it, but I do need to get the varnish off and give it a light sanding so that the paint sticks properly and doesn't just chip off. So, yeah. To say I'm not impressed with this stuff. The Gel Express is not so express. <laughs> Coffee espresso. Drink it. No. Gross. Okay, I'll see you in another 15 minutes. Not like an hour. <laughs> Come back in an hour. Okay. <laughs> that is the progress so far. So I used paint stripper on both of these and this one and you can see the difference there's still quite a high gloss on the edge here this is the one that i lightly sanded this very top portion and this groove here before using the baking soda and hot water but the varnish is still holding up pretty good along the edge here. You can see quite a difference in the, the sheen on this one compared to this one. This one, all of the varnish has been removed. So what I'm going to have to do is use the paint stripper to remove the varnish. And then I'm going to try using the baking soda and hot water to remove some more of the wood stain and see if that's going to work. I will still need to do some sanding, 
but I'm hoping to cut down on the amount of sanding that's needed, especially on areas like this where you have all the detail. You can't really sand that, so yeah, that's what we're working on. Our friend Maria is redecorating and she had some curtains that she does not need anymore. So we got some teal colored curtains that match our bathroom perfectly. So thank you, Maria. Thank and you. They had a little bit of um, like mold spots on them because it was very humid and rainy for the whole winter this year. Mm -hmm. And the spots hadn't come out just with regular washing, so I pre-washed with vinegar and then ran them through the machine and they came out as good as new. It's like me. It's good as new. Yes. So I decided to shorten one of the curtains so that it's the correct size for our bathroom window. So our friend Maria knows that teal blue is one of my favorite colors and she also knows that our accessories in the bathroom are all teal blue. So she is redecorating and she gave us her old curtains. So as you can see they're way too long and because she took these out of her apartment right on the beach. All of the metal is starting to rust from just from the salt in the air. But I need to shorten them anyways. So I'm going to cut the top portion off. I'm going to wash them quickly and then we'll be making curtains for the bathroom. And that means that we can finally get rid of the wooden shutters. I find them to be clumsy and they just take up a lot of space. They're also full of bug holes. Um, I haven't seen any fresh dust from the shutters yet, but I still would prefer to remove them. And they also don't close with the new windows because the new windows have a handle. So we're going to cut the top off. I'm going to cut above the stitch line so that the fabric doesn't fray while I'm washing it. And I'm going to add in baking soda and I'm actually using more vinegar with it because when I went back to St. Martin after Hurricane Irma to see what belongings were left that I could save I literally just threw everything in the washing machines with lots and lots of white vinegar so I'm going to use lots of vinegar for this as well. I'll just put this back in here. And we'll just continue to agitate and rub the fabric to get any mold spots out. And then we're going to wash it in the machine. So we don't have a big enough table for cutting out larger items for sewing. So until I have a proper sewing room with a big cutting table, I'm just using the bed. So I need to shorten the curtain for the bathroom. And I want it to be 150 centimeters. So one and a half meters. So that will give me enough 
fabric to make the pocket rod across the top to put over the curtain rod. And I figured the easiest way to do this is to just continue to fold it over. No, I'm trying to help. Okay. Go. Don't walk on my curtains. So especially with a slippery fabric like taffeta, uh, you want to pin the bottom edge so that it's not moving around. And that way everything is going to stay flat so that you get a relatively straight line. If you want it perfect, then you should mark it with chalk or, or a dressmaker's marker where you measure from the bottom and then mark the length all the way across. But I've been sewing for a long time. And I can get away with just doing it like this. This is not exactly the proper way to do it, but it's the easy way, especially when you don't have a table for marking and cutting. <laughs> that is true. So most of you probably don't know my degree is fashion design so not only have i been sewing for most of my life i actually have a degree in fashion so you're a fashionista <laughs> it just means that i have done a lot of sewing doesn't mean I always do things the right way but I usually get them to work so work what you got. exactly all right so I have pinned the fabric to create the pocket for the rod and in order to get the correct measurement I just went with my measure tape and you want a fair amount of ease so that it's easy to open and close the curtains you want it to to slide if it's if it's too tight then your fabric is not going to be able to move to open and close on the curtain rod. So I figure that should work well. And that is 16 centimeters, which means that I've doubled it over at eight centimeters. And on the bottom edge here, I have one and a half centimeters folded underneath so that I don't have to worry about any of the edge of the fabric coming loose. So you get a nice clean hem. That's our curtain. Oh, God.
just under six minutes. That would have taken me 20 at least. <laughs> It probably would have gone faster if I marked on the machine the top edge of the curtain of the fold because then I wouldn't have to watch so closely here. I could just line it up and go. And if I had pressed it with an iron, I could have gotten away with less needles. So I would have been able to sew a little faster. But that's our curtain. So there you go. They're the same length at both ends. Woohoo! <laughs> so this is not the right curtain rod for in here. It's a bit, probably a bit wider than it needs to be. But yeah, this is for the kitchen, but that gives you an idea of what the curtain will look like. And then when we open it, it will be like that. Thanks for watching our video. Please give us a like. And if you haven't so far, please subscribe. It helps with the algorithm. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Oh, okay, bye. bye. Christina was uh, removing the wine. Wine. <laughs> the wine. I was removing the wine. <laughs> removing the wine. Where's the wine? <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just giggling. <laughs> Ah! Take care. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. You forgot to say bye. I said it. I usually we start it. Together. I thought you forgot. Can we start over? Okay, bye. No, like the whole thing. No. Why? <laughs> no. What am I saying? <laughs> Thanks for watching our video. All right. Thanks for watching our video. Please give us a like. And if you haven't so far, please subscribe. It helps with the algorithm. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Okay, okay bye. bye.